I'm Derek from Revival Central, East London, South Africa. The baptism of suffering. What role does it play? What is it? We know in Hebrews 6 we see the foundational doctrines. Repentance from dead works, the doctrine of baptisms. There's the baptism in water, the baptism in the Holy Spirit. But there's also a baptism in into suffering and sometimes we we just look at it as terms of doctrine but there's there's more truth to this it's really about taking up his cross the role of the cross and it fits together with repentance from dead works there's a deep work here I don't like just getting into the doctrine of things we need to really, this needs to be part of our lives. And it's actually very important because it's to do, to do with the stripping of oneself. It's like an onion. I heard a prophet speak of this. It's like all the different layers on an onion. It's stripping of those layers. And it's basically, it's, you're poor in spirit. It's Jesus and him alone. And the the stripping of the of the dead works, and even uh, in all the aspects of our devotional walk with God, um, the cross comes into the stripping, and there needs to be a deep work here that it's really Jesus and Him alone, and that we become poor in spirit. So there's much to do with the baptism into suffering it's it's very important and the cross is really what separates uh, the, the church today many today are like the children of Israel who were on the bank uh, 40 years in the wilderness many died they did not enter into the promised land and the promised land, we're speaking of this coming move of God, the final move, the, f um, the final harvest. And many today in the charismatic movement and in the church world, on the other side of the bank, they're there. And many will not enter into what's to come. I think it was Prophet Neville Johnson from Australia spoke of this. And it's actually true. That is the way it is today. And what separates whether you will cross over and really enter into the promised land is the cross. A true understanding of, of the cross and a, a deep work of the cross in one's life. It's not enough to have an understanding of it, but it needs to be a deep work of the cross in every area of one's life. And that's every area of one's devotional life with God. Everything that one does, the cross needs to have a deep work there. And that is why the cross is so important. One thing I am going to just mention is the timing of it. That we are right here at the time of this outpouring of the Spirit. We are right at the time of this, this final move at the end of the age. If we turn quickly to the book of Haggai. Um, I just want to show you something that I haven't heard on YouTube or anywhere else. So um, Haggai is a very short book. It's actually just almost just two pages. I don't even have to flip over and turn from page to page. You can just you have it in front of you. And near the end of the book of Haggai, it expounds on the great shaking. It's all about prophetically of the shaking that happens near the end of the age. Before Jesus returns, there's a great shaking. And then he has the five hour wills showing this he's sovereign in this shaking. And even though the prophets have identified that the shaking started with the storms and what happened at Houston in America, that was the beginning of the great shaking. But really now we're moving into the fullness of it. And that is in verse 21. It speaks prophetically, I will shake heaven and earth. I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms. I will destroy the strength of the Gentile nations. I will overthrow the chariots and those who ride in them. 
the horses and their riders shall come down, every one by the sword of his brother. And this is a book I spent many years in when I was in the wilderness. And I know it very well. Many years I, I actually knew the importance of this. That's why the great shaking, I don't speak of it just as a doctrine. I've spent years when I'm in the wilderness and God showed me so much prophetically just from this book. I never went to many all all over. I spent a lot of time in this book, in these this two pages, hardly even turning the page. And he started revealing much to me concerning what is to come. So the book of Haggai has a special importance to me. And much revelation um, here. Uh, this, if you notice, it speaks of that he will destroy the strength of the Gentile nations. Not Israel, but the Gentile nations. We know that in the end times that Israel is central in, in the end time events. And here it's, it speaks of the nations you'd expect in the Middle East, but surrounding Israel. It speaks of the Gentile nations, basically would be surrounding Israel. And it says, we brother against brother. And we see the situation now in Saudi Arabia with uh, that's the Sunnis and with the Shia in, in Iran. And we see the nations of the world taking both sides. You see Russia and China on the Shia side with Iran and the United States and Israel with the Sunnis. So you see the whole world being drawn into this right next to Israel. Israel is also being drawn into this. So here we see actually the great shaking, which is, to me, this is much stronger than just the storms and what happened in the United States. Um, what is developing in the Middle East is much much more significant of the great shaking um, scripturally. It also means that um, that as the shaking comes, so this revival comes, this final outpouring before Jesus returns. And that means it's very close. We're right at the door of this final move of God. There was a prophet who said that this move begins in Australia. Um, he said Smith Wigglesworth prophesied uh, this was many years ago, I think 90 years ago, that there would be a tremendous move of God that would, would begin in Australia. However, digging a bit further, um, there appears to be no record that Smith Wigglesworth actually prophesied that. So I'm not so sure about where it actually will begin. But this is the time of this outpouring of the Spirit. That's why this is so significant in the book of Haggai. And... I'm also pointing out the doctrine, the importance of the cross in the coming move of God. The anointing is determined by the measure, the depth of the work of the cross in one's life. That's the true, the sound uh, walk with God, what he's looking for in the end. And it's also very much about a personal abiding in him, uh, of a heart walk with him, of abiding in his love, in his presence. And really, this is the message of for the promised land. It's the message for tomorrow. And this is what God's been revealing to, to his watchmen, to his servants who he's prepared for many years in the wilderness. He's revealed truth to them that is different from what's coming forth from Christian television, from books you read. There is a, a depth and a revelation of truth that's simply not coming forth from the rest of the body of Christ. And this truth, this foundation is necessary for what is to come. You cannot flow and move in what's to come unless you have this foundation. And the cross is central, is very, very important. Is a correct understanding of the cross in this. Everybody has that understanding. They say, okay, yes, we take up his cross. But a true, the depth of how the cross works in one's life um, and how this all fits together, that's very, very important, this foundation. It's the key for what's to come and the final move of God. And it's right at the door. Some have said that this happens after um, Oral Roberts and Billy Graham die. He says they will... Um, be with the Lord, Billy Graham, and 
shortly afterwards that this move of God would break out. And this is the hundredth year of of Dr. Billy Graham. And just pointing out that we're right at the door with everything. With war in the Middle East, with some great earthquakes coming, and the earthquake on the west coast, all these things are here, the prophetic things of the event. But the, what's important is is the foundation and understanding the cross, the importance of the cross. Actually, those who are not established and have not, not had this deep work of the cross in their lives, not only are they disqualified for the move of God that's to come, they will also find themselves disqualified with the rapture. Basically, all will die. We must either die now, die to our self-life through the working of the cross, or we will die through martyrdom during the tribulation. Do you understand that? The cross is key whether, whether you really know him. We know the anointing, know, know Jesus Christ. Many will say in that day, Lord, Lord, yes, I never knew you. Many will be left behind. And it's those who have not, do not know him, do not have the work of the, the cross in their lives. And they will have to suffer martyrdom during the tribulation. So this is very, very important. The cross. And understanding the depths of the work of the cross in one's life and what God wants to do. This is just a, a few words and more an introduction on the importance of the cross and its place in the final move of God and the final harvest at the end of the age. Many things have been happening in the network this this week. We're busy establishing uh, national ministries in Ghana, Nigeria, and soon in Kenya. And much is actually happening in Revival Central at this time. And if there are any who would like to, to give financially, it will help. I need to just go to the website revivalcentral.com and there are links there to give. It's important for the, the great harvest at the end of this age. Much needs to be done and the time is short. You can be part of this harvest. You can pray for this ministry. You can help financially. Join hands with me. Be part of this unusual work of ministries that span around the world many nations but what's important is not so much the network but the foundation it's a foundation for the final move of God many people don't realize this they don't understand this that the foundation with Revival Central is different from what's coming forth today and it's really the foundation for what is to come it's very, very important. But it's in God's hands whether He raises it up or not. We're entirely in His hands. We actually have nothing, we have little. But the foundation He has established in us for many years and that foundation is what's really important. So consider giving also financially to this ministry. We would like to set up actually a fund, like an African war chest, but not just for Africa, for the world, for the end time harvest. Wouldn't it be wonderful to have one of the, the largest and the biggest war chests for the end time move of God, for the final harvest? which could be used ready for the people of God. Things like this. It's 
it would be wonderful to see this happen and for this work ready to break forth from Africa to the world, to the nations of this world. And we're right here, we're right at it. Just many people can't see this. They do not discern the signs of the times. They do not know the seasons. They can't discern. Some feel that we're going to have, be here for 50 years, for 100 years. They do not realize that we're right at the end of the age. As one saint of God said many years ago, that you'll see people streaming into Europe. Then there'll be a, a World War Three. But just before World War Three, that's when Jesus comes for his people. And today we see the nations. We see with North Korea. We see in the Middle East. But eventually, as the prophets have all seen, it's Russia and other nations that come against the United States. Eventually, Russia is defeated on the mountains of Israel. And this is what we see with North Korea and the Middle East is only the beginning. Eventually, there's a World War III, a short war, it seems, but a World War III is coming. And many are not seeing this. They're not they just gloss over these things. The news, if you look at the news, you will not understand these things. But the signs are here. The prophets know the seasons and the times. If you really understood the closeness of it, people would give generously for this work. What is it to have billions on this earth and there are only a few years left. Is this not the most important work? This final move of God, this final harvest? The, is this not the greatest harvest in the history of the church? According to the book of Haggai it is. It says the greatest outpouring of the Spirit is not in the beginning of the church age at Pentecost, but it's at the end. The greatest outpouring of the Spirit is at the end of the age, just before Jesus returns. This is the greatest move of God in the history of the church. And it's the greatest harvest. What about contributing financially? I will create a fund. We will have to create a fund or some kind of structure for it. But we need finances. That's important. And it's also for web development for like to actually have a, a mobile app as well and there's much that's actually taking place right now I'm developing the back end of Revival Central with Laravel it's a PHP development framework and I basically could send bulk emails uh, I can go into ministries, edit them, and I've got ministries, partners, students, offering a Bible school. So there's much work that's been t taking place. I'm doing it all myself. I do not have the finances to employ uh, developers to do this for me. So I'm doing it all myself. But that's why finances play a part in this. And you can also be... Uh, you can partner with me in this, in what's happening here. But the important thing, even if you don't partner with this ministry, is you must um, lay hold of the truth that's coming forth from Revival Central. Because the truth here is for this final move of God. It's for the final harvest. And you must have this truth. It's not an option. You can't go any way your own way in this end times. There's only one way and the revelation um, goes hand in hand with God. what God is going to do with the outpouring of his spirit. Think about these things. This is Derek from Revival Central, East London, South Africa.